That's the Hopefully idea. It works. Hey, fellas. Hello. <laughs> hey, fella. Okay, so I think it's. Okay, I think oh it's God. important that you do the countdown, Sam, because if we start so doing we the countdown as well, so it'll be like delayed over the Yeah, point. Sam should do it. So I'll, I'll, keep in, I'll keep in mind, I do help you filming your side of it because your phone audio keeps cutting in and out a little bit, so... Yeah, we are, we, we are filming us as well. Alright, excellent, we love it. Yeah. Alright. Oh boy, I'm nervous. How are my summertime boys feeling? 30 seconds, oh god. I am a boy, and I am summer. This is summer. My man. So, hungry. <laughs> hungry. God, okay. I'm gonna get an arm a behind the head shot. Excuse me, sorry, Ellie. <laughs> oh god. We. Oh, it's, it's happening. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. I will say, and it's interesting, I did say it at this point. Uh, in this room you know, a little over two and a half months ago I think it was and I actually said that um, what I really needed Tasmanians to do was to stay at home sit on the couch and watch Netflix what I'd like to ask Tasmanians to do now is to get off the couch get off out of their house and go and make their own movie somewhere in this beautiful state I was alone some cowboy some as I could be This works, huh? My name is Angus, and this has been the Summertime Boys to Consuming Your Death. Hi, my name is Sam Horton, and I was involved in the Summertime Guide to the Secret Sequel to Orange. Hi, I'm Ryan, and I was part of 2020's Summer. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> A whole damn season. <laughs> My name is Bryce, and, uh, oh, Bryce Clark, if you want to get fancy, and, uh, I worked on something. Hello, my name is Joel Halby, and I was the director of the Summertime Beans to Shitting Your Pants. How did the initial concept for this film come about? This film started as nothing more than a film title. In late 2019, I didn't have any idea for plot, characters, anything at all, except for the name Summertime Guide to Faking Your Death. And that rattled around in my brain for months. I just thought it would be really, really cool to make a film with that name. Somewhere down the line, you know, I spoke to Sam about it, and I said, I had an idea for a film name, and he said, say no more. Let's make something out of that. Well, I mean, I mainly helped write it and produce it. I also was the very cursed character of Damien Hooper, which is currently my favorite role I've ever played to date. One day, I got a call from Sam and Joel, and they said, hey, we want to make a movie, and we want to make, create a character who knows a lot about music. And I, um, I happen to know a little bit about music. You should pan to the, the record collection. Good idea. I'm going to pan to the record collection. <laughs> okay, I've, I've panned to the record collection. I, I like my... I, li I, and I, I like my records. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now I'm going to pan Slowly back. Slowly go back, yeah. You can tell that this is planned. This is planned, yeah. We definitely did it. <laughs> Sam reached out to me, like, just after uh, um, the release of the previous short film here. And... Uh, he asked, hey, we've got a new film that we're working on. Do you want to be part of it? And I said, yeah. But I'm pretty sure it was one of the three of you, that being Sam, Joel, and Angus, that sent me the script. Uh, I think it was just to, like, just, like, consult, just, like, to be a proofreader or something. Eventually, uh, they called me up for a role in the film as Henry Scully. I eventually became Boom Operator and uh, I started doing uh, basic continuity around the thing and yeah. This is your second uh, film, your first being Exit Pursuit by a Bear. Was it nerve-wracking to be directing again, you know, especially on a film like this? 
Definitely, yeah. Directing Ex Pursued by a Bear, it was a very different style of project because, for one thing, the film was much shorter and we, even though we, we had a, a variety of locations we were filming and we had very specific expectations for its comfort, this was a lot more, this was the first time that we had done like a proper comedy as opposed to something that was like drama slash comedy or whatever. And also the biggest project we'd ever undertaken. So there was a lot going into it. In terms of pre-production, um, how did you find like the, the writing process, the creative process of this whole thing? It's definitely the most open writing, uh, ro definitely the most open writer's room I've ever been a part of. Is it where basically any idea went? The atmosphere while writing it was very fun. I particularly remember one morning when Sam came in, he came to my house and he started ranting about Dagwood dogs. He, started da he just started ranting about this guy he saw on like a news thing talking about how Dagwood dogs are really good for them. Good, good, good for you? I think it makes your brain better too. The more Dagwood dogs you eat, the more you think. And it was at that point where I said, oh, we're keeping that in the script. <laughs> Everyone else worked a lot harder on it than I did. For example, uh, Sam was very into his costume design. He, was, he put a lot of thought into it and little props. Oh, I, I will say that I did read, um, I'll see if I can find it, hang on. I did read a bunch of uh, anarchist literature. I did read a bunch of anarchist literature, a bunch of Chomsky for the role. Imagine trying to write with me. <laughs> I did help cultivate the soundtrack. Any, anything that's like sort of related to music that's not the Wiggles is not, that was, that was me pretty well. Um, I did get the, the location. The location we filmed at was my dad's house. Um, I just asked my dad like, hey man, can we take a couple of days to film at your house? And he was like, yeah. In the process of filming, um, obviously the main big project you worked on previously was here. How would you find working on Summertime Guide compared to working on a project like here? It was a very different experience because here was, um, I was always in a house when we were filming. I was in some sort of residential area. With Summertime Guide, we took a 30 minute drive out to a uh, farm and then started filming in, I guess, a more rural location, which was completely different for me. I think I really enjoyed being a part of the creative process rather than being a, a tool in the narrative. With Summertime Guide, there was a lot more uh, conversation between everyone involved about what could go on, what shouldn't happen, and it was uh, I really enjoyed the conversations that we were having on Summertime Guide, and here was a very heavy project, but Summertime Guide had a lot of levity to the the whole production, so I, I, I really loved the atmosphere. I think that there, when we started off, there was definitely, like, nerves as to how it was gonna go. I think none of us were very certain about what kind of film we kind of really had and so we went through the first day of filming and then definitely after that we found our stride and then as soon as we got to the house everything just kind of came together by itself. I definitely think after day two we were like alright we're gonna just make something that's truly cursed and I think we did a really good job from the finished product. What would you say was your favourite day of filming? My favourite day of filming it would have been when we got to shoot what we lovingly refer to as the Scully scene. So that's when uh, our good friend Henry Scully comes forth. What I love about that day, and that scene in particular, is that it was really a sort of testament to the energy of the project. We had the script and we had the ideas set forth, but so many little things were just improv on the day. We looked at the script, we said, what do we want to do with this scene? And anyone who was there went, what if we do this? How about we make this just be one shot throughout this whole segment? Demo! What? What? Codex! Fuck off! No! Shit! I thought we had two more bucks! What's going on? You see the clipboard fuck over there? Yeah? It's Henry! Henry? Henry. He's a social worker. The fucking bastard! We need a plan. We need a plan. We need a plan. Stop! Stop! Need a plan. Stop! Yeah! What if Scully 
he has a second pair of glasses that he puts on. Hmm. What if Lizard has a knife? These were not planned in the slightest, but we just went with it and made the scene so much better than I could have imagined. And I think that was kind of the, the energy that pulled the project together. It wasn't super serious, we have to do this, that and the other. We just made something that we loved. The day we shot the cake scene, the first cake scene, um, that was probably my favourite just because afterwards we just went wild with Auntie Donna references. Just, Here we are. Just a bevy with the boys. Just All the boys. Oh, just the boys. I really regret doing this now. Now get in the kill! <laughs> oh no! I have a free hand. You want some cake? Yeah. Yeah, have some cake! You're going to the tube with all those boys. They can't have sugar, Brian! I can't have it in my house! I'm being I generous! Think it's a big as a belt! Look at all those important. crumbs. They didn't even take any cake. One of my favourite scenes in the movie is with Scully. I remember before that happened, I asked my dad, like, oh, um, is there any room you don't want us to go in and film in? And he was like, oh, no, it's fine. He's like, well, can we film in your room? He's like, yeah, man. <laughs> so as long as I'm not sleeping in it, you can do whatever you want. So we sort of sh we started shooting the scene and Ryan was underneath the bed covers and I very remember I very much remember my dad walking in to come get something. He's like, oh, hi, boys. <laughs> and Ryan was just underneath the blanket and I don't think my dad saw him and I thought that was absolutely magical. <laughs> the standout day for me, um, I would have to say is probably day five. I've done late night or early morning shoots before uh, you know, I've done that constantly. Any other night shoot, I've been sort of dreading it, but with this one, I, it was weird to wake up and be eager about being up at 3 a.m. You know, because I think when we filmed Exit, while it was exciting, there was that kind of slump of kind of like, oh god, and that excitement didn't come until later. But I think day five, by that point, because of what we were filming, I was just so full of that excitement and energy, I was just kind of like, you know what, I'm just ready for anything. And then immediately after filming finished, I completely crashed. So, day five was the best one, I think, for me in the early morning shoots. Any time I spent with Ryan off camera was hilarious. Mm, did it. There was a ladder <laughs> to, to the attic, or oh, attic. Uh, uh, in the house that we shot at and whenever uh, we were shooting someone else's footage and the boom wasn't needed to be operated me and Ryan would just hide on the ladder and it was, it was amazing that it held us and we didn't make any noise the best moment for me goes back to the boom mic where uh, Ryan uh, is in the middle of a very emotional scene. Uh, he's given it his all, and he's given a really good performance. And I decide to sit on this very, very old couch very slowly, and it makes quite the creak, and it ruins the entire take. <laughs> I was instantly in tears, <laughs> both for embarrassment and just because it was absolutely hilarious. Hey, right. <laughs> oh, 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 my God. 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 Bit too creaky on the boom mic, man. Actually speaking on the Scully scene, because you edited that whole scene yourself. Uh, this, this is, um, one of the best few times that I can count that you've been It was really, really fascinating. I've done a little bit of editing in school projects and the like before, and I do enjoy the process, but then, you know, the the process of editing together a big, significant project, even just, just that scene, it was kind of foreign to me. So being able to jump in and just throw all of my energy into finding a specific timing and the pacing of the scene, building the tension through the cuts and what what to use, what to throw away, what little bits to edit in to cover sound and that kind of thing. It was really, really fascinating and I'm, I'm looking forward to doing more of it in the future, hopefully. Welcome to the Summertime Guide to Faking Your Death.
<laughs> I think for a film like this, definitely the fact that it's over an hour was very intriguing. The biggest editing hurdles definitely came from timing the soundtrack correctly and, uh, you know, figuring out, you know, the best sort of taste and also going through Angus's scenes. Editing his scenes was probably the most difficult solely just because, you know, the boy, the boy likes to improv and, you know, we, we love it, but, you know, it's, it's difficult to edit. But then again, I, you know, I wouldn't say stop it because it's fucking funny, man. So now that we've gotten to the point where, you know, this long after production, it's actually finally coming out. How do you feel about that? It's really weird. It's really weird. I've I've seen I've I've seen every sort of rough draft that's come out. So I've I've watched the progression of the movie come along. It's the first project I've worked on with people where it's actually come through to the end. I've worked on several other projects with Sam and Joel where we've written it and we've cast it, but we've never actually filmed it and edited it. So it's been really exciting to be sort of part of that process and sort of being generally excited for it you know like what is it 18 months 19 months since original pitch pretty much yeah yeah it's it's really crazy i'm really proud of all the work that everyone did but not bryce <laughs> <laughs> no i love you bryce <laughs> scully's my dad it feels like it was a fever dream like looking back on it now like d did it really happen Obviously, because we're about to bloody release it, but just thinking about all the random wild things we did, it feels like I'm going insane. I'm really excited, uh, basically because, yes, it's been a long time since we shot it, and I remember a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff that we were doing more than what we shot, so... Sorry, Sid was making noise in the background. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. So I feel like I'm coming into this as more of an audience member than a participant in the overall production, which is actually really fun, and I'm actually really, really excited to see how it all came together. We have a very special guest. It's Seath the Cat. Now, Seath, uh, you were not involved with Summertime Guide to Faking Your Death, so now that the film's about to come out, how do you feel about this project? Uh, how does it... What's what's the kind of emotional reaction you have to all the work that went into this project? <laughs> I think she's really excited. Yeah, she's really excited, I can tell. I've never been more nervous for a film release in my entire life. You know, there's so many things that I'm scared of. Um, audience reaction, uh, YouTube blocking the film because of its uh, humongous saw level soundtrack. Um, and all, uh, but yeah, also mainly just how people are going to respond to it. Because I know for a fact I love it, and most of the people I've shown so far have also just loved it. But you can't always predict that everyone is going to love it. Because uh, you want people to love it the same way that you do, obviously. But yeah, I think just, I'm hopeful that this will go well. You know, I just want people to like it. And just watch it and laugh, and you know, I wouldn't say, I mean, maybe you'll cry because it's really bad, if you, depending on your opinion, but, you know, I just hope people like it. I hope you watch it and feel good, you know, when you watch it, because I feel everything when I watch it. It means a lot to me. Given that a long, over a year and a half ago, I just had this idea where I went, oh, this would be fun, and now it's actually a completed film, over an hour long, um, it exists is kind of mind-blowing to me. Like, it, <laughs> I, I, when I finished doing X Pursued by a Bear, I had this thought of, I want to make another project, but I don't know where I would start with it. But having such a supportive team and such a singular, bold idea that pushed us all the way to the end to here is amazing. And now that this is about to come out, I've got, I've got that itch again to, to make things, to do something bolder weirder, more exciting, and I really, really, really want to keep at it, you know? Now that I've I've had this second chance to make something crazy, and it it looks like it's all pulling together, I've got that, I've got that buzz, you know? Any final words of wisdom you want to impart onto the people watching at home? Pay attention to the hair in the film. Um, we had to do a lot of stuff with hair, 
we had Ryan shave his head halfway through filming for the for the first half of the film because we filmed the second half first. And I had to shave my beard to play the iconic role of Morris the Mormon, and I also had the the privilege of cutting Angus's hair. So if there's one takeaway you can take from this film, is if you play with hair, it's gonna be a good movie. That's the only criteria for a good film these days. Wigs suck. Wigs suck. <laughs> Editing, cinematography, lighting, script, fuck all of that. Hair. I'm never wearing a fucking wig cap again. It sucks. Well, um, thank you for watching. Um, hopefully you watched the film before you watch this, because otherwise you kind of ruined the experience a little, but that's fine, please watch anyway. This has been the Summertime Guide to Faking Your Death. Six, five, four, three, two, one, save changes. No, f oh, okay, hang on, it'll come up. Second. <laughs> This will get all the views. Hello. Anything you want to add? Love it.